Bring on the Los Angeles Kings. Yes, the series is set. Oilers and Kings, a third consecutive year. Come on, Oiler fan, admit it, you're relieved. Everybody was playing it all cool about it potentially being Vegas, but better matchup for the Oilers in the early going here. Strudz and I are going to break it all down. We're going to preview a series. Rob Brown is going to hop in whenever he finishes his day job. And let's rock out a podcast tonight. As the season, the regular season is finally done. Coming at you as always from our Long Shots studio out here in Sherwood Park. Did you know Long Shots is available for corporate events? Why not have some fun with your coworkers? If you're a business owner, give them a call, set it up, treat your people. Why not? It's so much more than just golf. And as always, our program, show, podcast, live stream, brought to you by Sherwood Buick GMC. Big, beautiful dealership just off Baseline Road on the way into Sherwood Park. Can't recommend them enough. They've got a streamlined sales process, a warm and welcoming staff. They've got vehicles on their lot. You can test drive the vehicle that you want to buy. Financing is made easy. Oh, and by the way, the vehicles are awesome. I have the GMC Sierra 1500 elevation, and it's great. Sherwood Buick GMC can hook you up. Go see them at 10 Auto Mall Road. Struddy. Wow, the LA Kings almost blew it, buddy. What what an insane finish. And maybe for anybody who's listening in podcast form the next day or didn't actually see it, uh, like take us through what just happened there, man. The Kings they were in control, yeah. and then they weren't anymore after Vegas had lost. <laughs> yeah, so watching Vegas, they lose. You're like, okay, now we know who they're playing. And then the Kings are up 3-1. Uh, Chicago comes stormy back, rattles off uh, four. Was it four in a row? Yeah, no, yeah, three goals, three goals in a row, and then Kings score one to tie it four four. So that's where it stands right now as uh, we're speaking. I believe uh, overtime is just starting, but it doesn't. What happens now is irrelevant. The Kings got a point, Vegas didn't. Oilers, Kings for the third time in three years. I mean, like you want the rivalries? There you go. You got one three years in a row. I know. Crazy, man. And like, is it just me? LA was playing like they didn't want Dallas. Like when, when they let that lead go, they had a whole bunch of giddy up in their step. So penalty late, the power play ends up sniping. But sorry, LA was playing like they, they wanted no part of Dallas there, buddy. Like they, they had their hustle on big time. And Dallas smoke showed them this year. It wasn't yeah, even we- close between Dallas and LA this year. Well, I'll actually count. I I thought that as the period started, um, I thought Kings looked really like slow. They and thought they had it. Scared. They let their guard they, down. They looked, I honestly thought they almost looked scared. Like the the Blackhawks, with all due respect to that team, are not the juggernaut they looked like in in that in that 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 period of three goals they scored. They were all over the Kings. Like I'm talking all over them. So yeah, it was a really it was a weird game. You're you're right. They they weren't. I don't know if they were they were running from Dallas, but I thought when they got the lead, they just looked really almost tentative and scared. And the mm-hmm. guys I'm used to making plays, Dowdy, Kopitar, Campy, um, all these guys that we used to make plays were not making plays out there. It was really weird. It was a weird, weird game uh, for that. So Vegas doesn't come up with a whole lot tonight where they lose to an Anaheim team that on most given nights, they don't have a lot of business losing to. And that opens the door for the Los Angeles Kings. All they needed was a point. They ended up getting two. They win that game like six seconds in overtime on a Kempe snipe, by the way. As as much as Oilers fans might be like, oh, Talbot is ripe for the picking and kind of feeling that after they saw that, then they watch Kempe snipe like that and they go, oh, yeah, that guy, that, that, that guy. Like, so let's talk about the matchup here, Struds, and uh, we'll get to breaking down the hockey game here in a couple of minutes. Actually, let's break it all down in our breakdown brought to you by Mr. Dirk, the iconic men's clothing store founded in 1939 just off White Avenue on 102nd. Mr. Dirk has everything you need for every aspect of your wardrobe, casual clothes like jeans and pants, shirts, sweaters and shoes, and on the formal side, a great selection of brand name suits and sport coats and ties, and they do customs as well and in-house tailoring. Check them out at MrDirk.com. So season series this year between the Oilers and the Kings. 
Uh, went well for the Oilers. A 3-2 win to start. Then you'll recall in February, a 4-0 loss. Followed up by 4-2 and 4-1 wins for the Oilers. Straight up struds. This is a better matchup, I think, for the for the Oilers than Vegas would have been. You could make an argument that, you know, slaying that dragon early, taking on Vegas and just getting after it in round one, there might have been some some value in that for the Oilers. If you get by Vegas, now you're really cooking with gas, right? If you beat LA, well, you just beat LA again. And it doesn't really start for real till after that. But it is a better matchup for them, isn't it? Okay, three things. One, yes, it is probably the easier of the two teams would be the Kings. Second thing, is it easy to beat a team three years in a row in the first round of the playoffs? I'm not sure. Sooner or later, I don't think so. Maybe yeah. Kings have to have it. Maybe they have to uh, get their get their due against the Oilers. And third thing, if I had my choice, if I was in charge, I would have had the Oilers play the 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 Vegas Golden Knights. I believe that. You know, as to use the word slay in the dragon, it would kickstart them, get momentum going into the second round of the playoffs uh, to bring down the defending Stanley Cup champion. So I would have preferred Vegas in the first round to any other team. And quite frankly, I'd rather play Vegas in the first round than I would in the second round. Hmm. Although they can't play now. Could they play? Yes, I guess they, theoretically, I guess they could. But yeah, it's it's interesting, you know, like, L.A. goes to bed laying their head on the pillows at night when they're thinking about, you know, where they want to be and where they weren't able to get, and it's the Edmonton Oilers they're thinking about, right? Like those players, it's been the Oilers. I mean, Oiler fans know that feeling. For a whole year, it was Colorado, and for a whole year, it's Vegas, and you, you sit on that, right? You feel that. Well, two years in a row for this core group, it's been the Edmonton Oilers that they've had to sit there and think about. And so... You know, they're not going to back into this series. They're going to come out, I mean, some kind of fierce in this thing. What do you think that means? You know, you made the point about beating a team three three years in a row is not going to be easy. What do you think? What do you think that translates into when the puck drops? Well, I mean, I think, listen, I, I think any other fan knows this Kings team really well. You know, they've played this team a lot over the last, yeah. the, the, the regular season and the playoffs. I think the familiar, the characters haven't changed that much on that side. I, I, I believe that Victor Arverson didn't play last year in the playoffs. He's a playoff performer. And not surprisingly tonight, he was the one who got the equalizer to, 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 to ensure that the Kings were going to play the Oilers. But I just look at the Kings. We know how they like to play. We know how they like to kind of sit back and just wait for the orders to counterpunch or to, to counterpunch on the orders if they if they make a mistake. So I, I think the the rule uh, or the the word that I would use to describe how the orders have to be this first round is discipline. They've got to be disciplined in the way they approach this game. They're going to build the wall. They're going to build a massive wall, the uh, the uh, the Kings, and you cannot break against that wall. You have to continually do either use your speed or chip the puck behind the wall and go and get it. Do not try to stick handle through them all if you if you're if you're getting stymied. And there'll be times where Kings are set it up really well, uh, where where they hold it. And then Shogger, you, you just got to be patient. Just keep chipping it through and be prepared to uh, take advantage of the chance when you get them. But they can't just go in there saying we're going to win this in four. We got to get out of this in four. Yeah, be patient. Be patient. Be patient. It is going to force them to play a mature game where they stay with a game plan that they don't love, right? Like Leon Dreisaitl, he had the great quote when I said, you know, well, it wasn't a great quote, but I said, there's a little piece of you die every time you got to dump the puck in. And he said, yeah. But against the <laughs> LA Kings, I mean, that's just part of it. You need to pick your spots to try and carry it over the line. You need to make sure. And sometimes that means you got to give it up. And you got to go get it back. Leon Drysaddle is not the best puck pursuit player out there, right? That's not his forte. So you're gonna have to play a mature style. You're gonna have to believe in the system. You're gonna have to believe in. Oh, are you hearing that? Did you hear that phone just ring? Yeah, sorry, I'm just a Colin Brownie. Oh, yeah. Okay, right, right on the air. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, a... the volume was up. It shouldn't have been. Oh no, no problem, buds. You're good, Steve. You're good. We can't wait for Brownie to join in. But Struds, it's going to force them to play a pretty, you know, mature brand of hockey where they have to stick to a game plan that they don't like and, you know, not let frustration set in no matter what happens. Yeah, the good thing is they've been through this, right? We've seen they've they've seen this already twice. Um, but I, I just I, I just worry a little bit that they'll be in a hurry to just slam through this team and try to get to the next round. I, I think that they 
they've been through it. They understand. They just take one, quite frankly, one period at a time. Just handle the puck, massage, uh, handle the uh, be the uh, handle the pressure properly. Be mm-hmm. patient. And then once again, the offensive zone, that's when you take control. That's where you're grinding. That's where you've got your half court offense set up. And, you know, I think of all the goaltending duos in the Pacific, I would suggest to you that the Kings are at the bottom. I don't think it's close. Uh, you guys might have a different feeling, but I think they're, they're at the bottom of the West of the Pacific comp, uh, division for sure. Hi, Brownie. Hello guys. <laughs> How are we doing, my friend? How was the post game show? How were the callers? Were they in a panic? How's everybody doing? Uh, no, I don't think so. Actually, the callers were pretty good. I think most of the post game was watching the Vegas yeah, game yeah, and then yeah, watching yeah, the yeah. LA game. Yeah. So we had both, must... I had both games on, so I I got to watch all of the hockey. Uh, Vegas did not play very well uh, as the game moved on. Um, they they are missing. I think they had seven regulars out of the lineup tonight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the team you want to play in the first round. They're beat up and, and injured right now. The LA Kings they were dominant. They were dominant other than a span where Cam Talbot let in two bad goals. Um, but it was a game that the LA Kings were completely in control of from start to finish. And it took till about a minute 20 to go in the National Hockey League season for the Edmonton yeah. Oilers to find out who they're playing so, in the first round. So, Brownie, I, I, I let Strudz have his say about whether it would have been better to kind of try and slay the dragon in the first series against Vegas or if because it's maybe an easier opponent against L.A., if that's better. How do you view this first-round series versus what could have been against Vegas for the Oilers strategically in this year's playoffs? Well, I think the Vegas Golden Knights, if they get through the first round, will get better as the rounds go on Mm -hmm. because they have a bunch of players that are injured, coming back from injuries or coming back from illness. If they're fully healthy with the team they have, they are a very good hockey club. But right now, they are not all healthy. Aiden Hill played tonight. He did not play well. He's just coming back from injury. That is a team I think that the Oilers would have... I think anyone would want to play that team in the first round because they're so badly beat up. The LA Kings are a good hockey club. They are. Their problem is in net. And I heard Strud just talk about it. Now, I, I would go with LA versus Colorado. Those are the two worst teams for goaltending. It's Colorado. Georgie the fifth has been terrible this year for Colorado, but LA is good the everywhere. They, they're, yeah, I, they might have to. But the the LA Kings are good up front. They're they're deep down the middle. Uh, they're they got good defensemen. But the one weakness they have is, is in net. I think the Oilers have a huge advantage with Skinner over Talbot. Um, but I, it's not an easy out. And I I listen to Struts. You do not want to look past the LA Kings. Like, two years in a row, but it took seven games in, in the first year, and it was a 2 nothing score in Game 7. And then it was in six games last year. So, L.A.'s good. The Oilers should be favored. And as Reed pointed out before I left, the Oilers finished the season five points ahead of L.A., which is like one point a month. So, it's not as though there's a huge discrepancy. So, this should be a good series, but it should be a series that the Oilers win. Mm-hmm. Question for both of you guys. Yep. Do, I know we're getting ahead of it. Do you load up the top line against Kings? Yeah, I was just going to go there, Struds, because I'm looking I'm back on... Thunder. No, no, not at all, buddy. No, it's a great point <laughs> by you. And it's a good it's a good place to take this now. Because... I was just going to bring that up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I have some information for you, if you'll just let me... Okay, okay uh, sorry. sorry. Eschew yeah. it. That's not a word. Uh, both series, they started on separate lines and ended up together. Games four, five, and six, they started the games together. They shifted that way partway through the series, and that's the way they got through the series was with McDavid and Drysaddle playing together. And Evander Kane was the guy that was on their wing um, for a couple of those games. I think when they first switched it, it might have been Yamamoto. It ended up being Evander Kane. This year, they've gone, those guys loaded up against the LA Kings as well. I think Chris Knobloch has looked back at the history of it, and I think he's shown a willingness to do it against LA. It'll be very interesting to see if he's willing to start the series that way because that's the way it finished last time around. I'm not sure what Knobloch's going to do, but I think they're going to end up playing together in this series, Brownie. 
Oh, I'd say 100% they will. And uh, if I'm if, if I'm Knobloch, you're on home ice, you're favored, you got the fans are going to be going crazy. I, first shift of the first game, I have my best line together. And I'm just saying to the LA Kings, here's here's what we got. You haven't been able to stop it the last couple of times we've played in the playoffs. We're going to start with them. Show me if you're capable of stopping this line. So I'm starting. If I'm Knobloch, I'm starting with McDavid and Drysaddle and Zach Hyman. Game one, opening shift, that's my line. Yeah. Struds? I bring I bring it up because I've started him too. I think you just put him out there. Now, it, things can go – if, if it doesn't go well, then you got to backtrack, right? But That's the I problem, think you, Sonny. Yeah, that's yeah. Problem. I think though you – and that, that that's – because then it's kind of like admitting it, oh, my God, our big line can't get it done. So I, I truly well, think – I, th- I think you go with them. I think you start with them. Um, then the rest of the lines get interesting, but yeah. And another thing, Shoggy, on that with starting them, the, when you play against the Vegas Golden Knights, the Golden Knights have six good defensemen. And yeah. they, they're not afraid to put their second or third pairing out against anybody. The LA Kings are top heavy on the back end. Drew Doughty, they want him out every time against Connor McDavid. Well, if you're starting on home ice, you can dictate when Leon and, and Connor are on the ice. And there'll be times when Dowdy's out there, but you can get them in, in, into situations where they're going out against Spence or England on the back end. Those defensemen cannot handle Connor and Leon together. So that's why I have them playing together in game one, because the LA defense is not as deep as the Vegas Golden Knights defense. And you can take advantage of it by putting your best players out there and picking the matchups. Another quick one for you guys. If they do load up the big line, does that make it more or less likely Holloway is in the lineup? I'm, I'm going to let tonight, you two talk way. about this. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to stay right out of the first part of this one. Well, yeah, Tony, I, I, go ahead, Struts. No, I'm asking you, do, do you think that it makes it okay. more or less? If they load up the big line, do you put 55 in or not? Well, it, to me, it doesn't, it doesn't change your lineup. Because you still the, the problem for Holloway is if if you believe that Kane and Holloway and all those guys, or sorry, Kane and Fold and everyone are top nine players, there's still not that spot for Holloway. And they, I don't see him being a fourth line guy because the fourth line doesn't play much, and he doesn't kill or he's not on the power play. But watching Holloway play, he's outplayed a couple other top nine players in this little stretch he's been up here. So it's one of those, do you put him in the top nine spot and pull out a veteran player? I wouldn't yet, but I do believe that Holloway will play in the first series. I just don't know if it'll be in game one, unless Evander Kane isn't 100% healthy. Yeah, I'm going to go, I'm gonna tell, I think he's, they start with all the veterans. I think he is, he's the guy that becomes the break cl- uh, glass in case of emergency guy. I think that's the guy that you bring in. And I, so I don't know. I think he's going to go with his veterans. I really do. Then that'll be the shot in the arm uh, coming out of the bullpen. Yeah. I mean, my whole point about Holloway was, is he going to play well enough to get himself into the conversation to be in the lineup for game number one? Um, And I believed the early signs were that he was going to. I think he has. I think he's in the conversation. I think he's outplayed a pile of guys. And I know it's not convenient or easy, but I like the energy. And I think it's going to translate well in the playoffs. And I think the Oilers have a pace issue when he's not in there. And so I like it. I'm still not sure where is the problem because I do agree it's not ideal on the fourth line. It'd be better for him to be playing with third line caliber players, but you know, um, he's played well enough that the head coach needs to be scratching his head, trying to figure out a way to make it work because, you know, so you don't start him struds. If you don't start him, you're not putting your 12 best forwards out there based on the last you know, 10 days of the season. Now, some would say that last 10 days of the season doesn't matter that much, and you go with the ones that brought you there, but he has consistently outplayed every most of the other guys that are in the running for that job. So, you know, I, I'm torn because I get it's not a great fit, but I love that speed and that energy and that physicality. 
Yeah, I, 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 I can't take too much out of these last few games. You know, yeah. like I just like tonight. It was that was an exhibition game lineup. Last night, in Phoenix or Arizona, whatever you want to call them, it just it was a weird game. Didn't go back to the weekend. Like I just, I don't know. I can't get too fired up about anything I've saw. I've seen any any of these any of these uh, games. So yeah, I. I, I haven't come out of the bullpen, but I, I agree with you. I think he will come in at some point and uh, kind of bring some juice. Okay, a couple things from tonight's game that we want to get to, uh, and we'll do it in our takeaway segment. So how did you feel about Stuart Skinner starting uh, behind a skeleton of a lineup, kind of being thrown to the wolves there? Interesting decision from Chris Knobloch. We'll hear from him on that. What about the fact that the Oilers threw in the towel on the prospect of home ice advantage in the third round? They iced a lineup tonight, had no chance. Had they won this game tonight, if they faced Colorado down the road, they would have had home ice advantage. Uh, didn't even try tonight. Two interesting decisions. I want to bat it around a little bit. That's Struddy's world. Uh, ask us anything. Take a lap. Tons more still ahead. Uh, Struds, by the way, before we rip to break here, we do need to get in our relentless player of the game. Uh, brought to you by You Can Youth Services at Edmonton Charity Relentless in helping youth age 16 to 24 get out of harm's way and find employment. Visit You Can dot c a who are you going to tap tonight struts there weren't a lot of people that you know i didn't think the others played terrible tonight i know this game doesn't matter but i thought warren fogel is just right now he's all over that puck he is i hope he brings this into well not not just this the playoffs but for him the rest of his career i i think he's playing at a level we haven't seen in at this consistently uh in his career guys Brownie has Fogel earned a, earned a spot next to McDavid and Drysaddle on the big line if they throw it together. Because if you can trust Fogel there, that leaves you lots of nice stuff on your second line. Huh. Well, it certainly does. Then you could have Nugent Hopkins, Hyman, Henrik, or Kane, or one hundred percent. Fogel's been excellent. And the last, I know that you're you're pushing Holloway and how well he's played, and he has been good. But the last five games, Warren Fogel might be your best player. The, the energy he's brought. the uh, if, if he had any sort of puck luck or maybe just a tad more sense for scoring, he would have uh, he yeah. would have had a three-goal season, and that would be with 10 goals in the last week. He had so many great <laughs> eight-scoring chances. So, yeah, did, yeah. so yeah, yeah, I mean, that's a good point. I hadn't thought of that, but you're right. If he goes up now, I do think they like Hyman there. And then you have... Fogel playing on your second line, either with Henrik or with, with Kane. I, I think a lot of question marks, though, is what happens with Kane going forward, how healthy he is. Because yeah. it's, it's not just a, a bump and a bruise if you miss three games coming down the stretch. 100%. All right, that was uh, the breakdown brought to you by Mr. Dirk. Plenty more talk about tonight's game, this playoff series, what's going on around the league. Uh, very short break. Stay with us. The fastest growing male grooming company on the planet just got even better. Backscape 2.0 with a revolutionary friction fit handle makes the razor easy to pop in and out to shave not only your back, but anywhere on your body. And those hard to reach spots just got even easier with the new ergonomic design. Backscape's new titanium shave head makes for a smoother, more comfortable shave that respects your skin. Backscape 2.0, stay smooth, gentlemen. On paper, my life looks exciting. In reality, not so much. Every day it's same old, same old. Clock in, clock out. Then I discovered Play Alberta. I can play casino games anytime. Bet on any game. And buy lottery tickets anywhere in Alberta. I think my spleen is ruptured. All right, let's keep the discussion rolling with takeaways brought to you by Redefined Health. If you're an athlete, you know how taxing sports can be on your body, Brownie. At Redefined Health, they help athletes like Brownie achieve better overall performance and prevent injuries. Adding professional treatment to your training can be the missing link to pushing Brownie to the next level. Let the team at Redefined Health, Dr. Tyler Fix and company, help you perform at your peak. Visit redefinedhealth.com. Brownie, I think your peak is still ahead of you, buddy. 
Your best days are still ahead. <laughs> well, my, my wife's hoping so because she's not satisfied with what she's got right now. <laughs> uh, we don't need to go too deep into that one. Uh, the schedule came out. Does one of you have it in front of you? You got The schedule or what? It's going to be Monday, I, Wednesday? It, the schedule is Monday, Wednesday in Edmonton, 8 p.m. starts. Friday, Sunday in L.A., 8.30 Mountain Time starts. Oh. Then there is an extra day off, and then they go May 1st, May 3rd, May 5th, which is Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, game 5, 6, 7. Interesting. Okay. Let's get some so, naps in. Yeah, those are going to be some late yeah, nights, man. Yes, late nights. 8.30. That is nuts. Yeah. Nuts. Okay, people in uh, well, in Ontario means- wanting to watch Connor McDavid play have to stay up till ten thirty for puck drop. And that too, nice. Shoggy. That's the eight thirty where it's eight thirty, but then it's on the TNT, and we're going to push it back to eight fifty two possibility. Yeah, Jeez, that's crazy, nice. man. Uh, okay, guys, a couple of things. A uh, couple of things to discuss here. Uh, Chris Knobloch's handling of the lineup the last couple of nights, um, and I sent out a tweet. I wasn't quite understanding why he would ice that watered down a lineup and then start Skinner. I just thought it it exposed him in a way that I just that could have been ugly. Like that that easily could have been six or seven goals. And if is that great for a guy that's trying to get himself ready for the postseason? Two things. I didn't like the fact that they threw in the towel on home ice advantage against Colorado completely. I think they could have rested a few guys the other night and a few guys tonight. And I didn't like the fact that they threw Skinner to the Wolves behind a skeleton of a lineup. I don't think it's the end of the world, but I think it was a misstep from a coach that I don't think makes a lot of missteps lineup-wise. Brownie? Um, First, the Skinner situation. Yeah, I, that makes sense. It, you don't want him to sit too long, so why not play him in Arizona if you're playing a full lineup there? and then have Pickard play in Colorado. Now, maybe they were expecting Colorado to not ice their best players, but reading the room, Colorado's been playing poorly. They needed to have a good effort. Um, They had their star player was one point away from setting a franchise record and would want to play, and their other star players in a Norris Trophy race with Quinn Hughes. So reading the room, you feel that Colorado probably was going to ice a pretty good lineup. So for Skinner, if you wanted him to play one of the last two games, it would have made more sense playing in the lineup with his team in front of him. So, yeah, I agree with you 100% there. As for trying to win the game and home ice advantage, that's so far down the road. I'm not sure. I mean, I don't think Colorado is going to be there, but to me, that one's not as big a deal. I think the Skinner one would be more, more on the front burner for me. Yeah, I think that as far as the this the um, beating Colorado in the standings, I think that there was zero value placed on that. Obviously, the way the way Clearly. he iced his lineup. So I'm like, I, I agree with Brown. I don't think Colorado is going to be there either. I don't think they're going to make it to the third round. Um, so yeah, I think it's probably going to really not matter much. As far as the Skinner thing, I I believe that there. Oh, I know there's always conversation between the goalie, the goalie coach, and head coach. How do you guys want to work this? So I think that this isn't something that Block would have just done on his own without thinking about it. This would have been done uh, in conjunction with the goalie coach and the goalie. When do you want to play? How do you want to play? Um, and and those types of conversations. Maybe Skinner didn't want to sit out from uh, what day is it today? Wednesday, so he sat out. He wanted to play Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And the money he wanted to be one day closer. Um, so I don't know. I the goalie one, I, I'm gonna just I'm gonna give him the pass because this wasn't done in 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 a, in a vacuum. It was done with the goalie and the goalie coach, I believe. Okay, let's get to the Weiss Johnson sound box. They're offering two hundred dollars off their Fantech HEPA filter system. Be proactive to keep the air in your home clean. If we have another forest fire season like years past, you'll be happy that you spend a bit of money and put it in, especially for those with respiratory issues. Contact them for this amazing deal by visiting weiss-johnson.com today. Jingle. Oh, that was fast. Keith, that, that, 
You were a little slow the other night, just a touch fast. <laughs> oh, you you, you called me out last time, in. so I'm, I'm, I'm my finger was itching. After the word <laughs> jingle, uh, I'll give credit to Spec who was on the road with the Oilers, uh, and he had a couple questions for Knobloch post game about these decisions with Skinner. In hindsight, should Stuart Skinner have been subjected to playing behind that lineup against this team? No, it's not. Uh, wasn't fair for him. Uh, very difficult. And um, before we uh, we had plan on how much of the game he was going to play, and um, you know the chances that he saw wasn't a, a very structured game. Um, the chances weren't uh, just point blank chances. And very difficult for the goalie. And um, yeah, not not uh, not easy for him. Yeah, were you just so we're clear? Did you have a plan to? I assume he was going to play the whole 60 minutes if things went well, or did you not have that plan? Um, yeah, we, we talked about it, but um, it wasn't, uh, wasn't set what we were going to do. Um, but we had some cases on how long we wanted in there. And um, yeah, it wasn't, uh, we're going to just play in by ear. Okay. Uh, yeah. I don't really know what to read into all of that. Uh, I feel like he was, I, like, like, I don't know, Struds, was there a plan or wasn't there a plan? I do not believe the plan was to play Stuart Skinner for 20 minutes and then and then have him not play anymore. I think the plan was probably just have him play the game. Um, and it went kind of awry on them. So, again, this isn't the end of the world. It's not a huge deal. Chris Knobloch has shown a fantastic touch with this lineup and this bench. So we're not going to necessarily beat this to death. I just... I think that was a misstep. I really do. I think it was a misstep to have that watered down a lineup and throw your starting goalie uh, right before the playoffs in because, again, that could have easily been a pile of goal struts. What did you make of his – what he had to say there, Spreddy? Yeah, it didn't – it was a little bit uh, confusing, you know. Yeah. I, I, or, or unclear would be. It, it, I did, you know, did they want him to only play twenty? Did they want him to play the whole sixty? Are you going to see how it goes? I have a hard time believing. I just. Knowing coaches like I do, I just don't think they're just going to kind of play it by feel with their their start. Like, okay, we'll just see how it goes. Like, yeah. I just, <laughs> I, I have a hard time just believing that, especially yeah. you know, planning when there's so much planning going on. I so I don't know. Was he going to play twenty? Was he going to play the whole sixty? I'm not sure. I we I think had a that, few scenarios we had. We're going to play yeah. it by year, and then it was well before we had a plan, and it's. I think yeah. what happened is they went, oh shit. Yeah, this is bad. Yeah, we oh, got to get him out of boy. here. Oh, yeah. boy. And I think they adjusted on the fly. And like that happens, Brownie. You got to adjust on the fly. Yeah. You do. I, I, well, it's funny listening to him talk. Isn't that how you go into every game with a goalie? Well, his, our plan is to play him for 60, but I guess we'll see how it goes <laughs> and see how he's playing. And if they start scoring goals on him, well, maybe he won't play 60. I honestly think that they had a plan in place. And they were maybe a little surprised that Colorado iced that lineup. If you look around the National Hockey League, I think Winnipeg sat out eight players know, tonight. And Everybody Vancouver knew. sat out five. Vancouver so, Colorado I mean, needed to lean into it a bit. Like, they've been brutal. They've I been can. getting embarrassed. They did. Like, they had to lean into 100%. it. 100%. That, yeah. Well, that's what I thought. But you don't know until the day of. I mean, yeah. there's, there's players in the league, you guys, that if – if Nathan McKinnon gets hurt, the Colorado Avalanche aren't winning the Stanley Cup. And I think a lot of people believe that if Connor McDavid is hurt, the, the, the Edmonton Oilers' chance to win the Stanley Cup go greatly down, more so than any other teams. You can take anyone off Dallas, you can take anyone off Winnipeg, and it will hurt them, but it won't decimate them like losing Connor or losing McKinnon. They're that good. So I think maybe they're thinking, okay, well, they're not going to play McKinnon. Because he's too valuable. If they lose him, they're years out. So that's the only thing that I could think of of why you would take all your players out yet put your star goalie. Like, to me, if you're taking all your players out, well, here you go, Calvin. We're sorry. Yeah. We'll buy you a nice dinner <laughs> afterwards. But this one's going to be on you. We're yeah, saving yeah. the big guy for the big games. And that's his job. That's his job. Like, honestly, that's when you're the backup, you're there to take the the hits for the, for the big guy. But I'll, I'll say this, honestly, guys, what are we? It's Thursday. So we got Friday, Saturday, Sunday, three days to just, you know, clear the mechanism. And ultimately I'm not sure it's really going to matter. Like, I think that the, the, the biggest thing is that 
the big the four, the skaters got rested, and I'm and the guy the skater I'm specifically looking at is that comb. I wouldn't have played that comb yesterday or today. I would have sat him out two games in a row, knowing what we saw when he sat out those five games when he was sick and how he's played since that return. So that's the guy I would have sat out two games, but he got one. All those guys got one. They're all healthy, feeling good, heading into game one on Monday. Let's get uh, let's get into the Weiss Johnson YouTube mentions. Steve, I'm going to give you another chance here. Visit Weiss-Johnson.com for more. Jingle. Weiss Johnson, Weiss Johnson, whoa. A little slow. Hey. Uh, Zoe, Zoe R says Skinner isn't dumb. He understands the situation he was in. I'm sure he probably figured it wasn't going to be all sunshine and roses. That's a measured <laughs> thought. Uh, Kathy DZ says Skinner seems to be the most mentally strong goalie we've had in a while. I'm not worried. Uh, Shane Matheson says totally agree. Kathy, he's already forgotten it. Uh, Nick Milan says, uh, skinny will play some T Swift and shake it off. Get ready for game one. He is a pro. Trizent <laughs> says the coach got exposed. Noel Rinsky is complaining, saying in all caps, people are making it the end of the world. I don't think anybody's doing that, respectfully, Noel. I think it's just struds. This is this is a classic notable, bud. This is just a classic fall yeah. right into that notable <laughs> category, pal. And maybe it's a bit overthinking. You know, I think that maybe uh, you get in that coach's room, you're overthinking it and trying to think through things. Um, the simple would have put, just played Cal Scalvin. You're playing back to back, bang, simple. Yeah, man. Play Skinner against Arizona and play Calvin in the last one against Colorado. I think that makes sense. I'm not as convinced that home ice advantage means absolutely nothing. Like the Oilers are a good enough team that it's okay to be thinking a couple of rounds out. Expect to be in the third round, and if you'd address so well, here here was he, so here was the balance. You play everybody last game, and it allows your power play unit to all be together, right? One more game with everybody together. That's what they benefited by playing everybody last game uh, against Arizona. Then the other option would have been sit half of the guys last night and then half of the guys tonight, and then you've at least got a chip and a chair and a chance to try and grab home ice advantage because the Colorado Avalanche gentlemen are the best home ice team in the league. They got that elevation advantage. They're dynamite on home ice. And sure, it feels like way down the road until you're in game seven in Denver going, oh boy. I'm just saying it's okay for the Oilers to be thinking three rounds ahead because they're not good and they should. So I'm not sure I would have erred on the side of letting the power play play together one more time versus maybe icing a lineup that would have had a chance tonight, Struts. Um, no, I would have. I, if I, I like the way they did as far as rest everyone the same night, just rest them all this game here. You get them in, you, there's bubble wrap them, get them into the playoffs healthy. I could see what you're saying. You know, like if you wanted to play Akum and Bouchard last night, I, I could, I could, I could understand what you're kind of getting into. Um, See, or I've been nursing PC last time. I'm with you, Strud. I, I, it would, it's, you're not going to play half and half because if you really have that much interest in winning this game to have game seven in the third round, then you play your whole lineup. You don't say, okay, yeah. we're going to play Connor Coach and, and Dude. It doesn't have to be all no, or nothing. No, if, if you, if it, it's, well, yeah, it does. If half it's that awesome. important, and you, yeah. and you say it's important, if it's that important, then you dress everyone. But if it's, it, if it's not that important, and, well, I don't think it's that important. I don't think it's that important. I think it would have been really would have looked really dumb for the Edmonton Oilers to dress everyone to try to get home ice against the team that they may play three rounds from now. And in that game, Bouchard takes a slap shot on the power play and it hits Hyman in the foot and breaks his foot. I never said well, they we should tried, dress though. everyone. I never said well, that. that. Yeah, but but no, but don't if you're not going to try to win the game, then don't dress any yeah. of them. Don't putting in two guys. Why? Game seven, is three it, rounds from now, who cares? It does not matter. You've got to win your first round first. So, to me, I, I think they did the exact right thing sitting all the players out tonight. It, now you know every one of those players is healthy for game one. Struddy, last word, buds. There's no chance Colorado beats Winnipeg. <laughs> but they, they, can't, they can't be saying to themselves there's zero chance they'll be there. Uh, so no, let's no, not even consider it. They're not saying it. I'm saying it. They're, oh, I yeah. just, I, Hellebuck's not losing to either one of those goaltenders. I love it. 
That's going to be a way. And neither team series. is beating the Dallas Stars, and neither team is beating the Dallas Stars. Yes. Yeah, there you, you don't go. think Winnipeg? I think Winnipeg might beat them. That's too, no, that's a long ways down so. the road, though. Interesting. Okay. They're not, they're already thinking about that, though. They're thinking about Game Seven. Yeah. Good <laughs> stuff. Uh, good stuff. Good debate. And again, uh, this is not the end of the world on Chris Knobloch. He has shown himself to have an excellent touch with this lineup. So I was just surprised tonight. I thought uh, I was a little bit surprised. So definitely worth mentioning, but definitely not the end of the world. Uh, let's get to the best segment on the entire podcast. The best segment that's ever been done on the podcast. Uh, and that is going to be brownie points brought to you by Hamel's beef jerky. Oh, some samples arrived in the mail today, boys. Oh, is it high end stuff? It's an Alberta based family owned business opened in 1962. And their beef jerky is out of this world. Hamel's Meats sent their sweet and spicy jerky to the International Space Station in 2009. I'm going to read that part of the ad read every night. I think it's so cool that their jerky went into space. For the month of April, get three pounds of beef jerky for 85 bucks and free shipping. You can mix and match from their 14 flavors. Fast shipping anywhere in Alberta. Visit albertajerky.com. Jingle. No. No jingle for them. We need a jingle for <laughs> Alberta jerk. Well, I was going to sing Brownie. something. Yeah. What do you got, Brownie? I tell you, I got, I got my, uh, I got my box about three days ago. So mm -hmm. my wife and I have had it the last three days. Oh my god, is it delicious? It is so good. Yeah, yeah. And there's all kinds of different types. It is really, really good. So thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, brownie points for tonight. It's a combination of last night and tonight because we didn't do a show last night. Or if you guys did a show, you didn't invite me to it. But here we go. 105 brownie points to Nikita Kucherov for being the fifth player in the history of the National Hockey League to get 100 assists. I watched that game. He probably could have had nine assists in that game. Yeah. And you talk about players resting. He played 20 minutes in the first two periods alone. They were trying to get him assists. It was pretty cool. 69 brownie points from Austin Matthews. It wasn't 70, but 69 is a really good year, too. I've got <laughs> minus 100 for the NHL not letting us know when the playoffs started until after the game tonight. Uh, they lose 100 points for that one. 20 brownie points for Warren Fogel scoring his 20th goal of the season. He was an excited young man last night when he scored mm -hmm. that 20th goal. It carried into today's game. 1,000 brownie points Whoa. for the Edmonton Whoa. Oilers getting for the Oilers getting through the last two nothing games with no injuries. Playing Whoa. healthy to start the playoffs is huge. That's my biggest ever announcement that's, of a thousand points. And that's the, the final biggest one, one ever. Brownie. Came. Like it is the that, biggest one ever. But the playoffs, so we haven't had playoff brownie points yet. They're going to be huge. But the last one, thirty-three brownie points for Victor Arvidsson for finally allowing us to know who the Edmonton Oilers are playing in the playoffs with one minute and 20 seconds left in the entire National Hockey League season. <laughs> Arvidsson scored a goal to tie the game so that we, Edmonton Oilers fans, get to cheer against the LA Kings. Holy snap. There you, you are doling out. You doled out 1,000, 11, 12, 13. You, did, you doled out like 1,300 brownie points tonight, buddy. Feeling good. I yeah. have so many brownie points in my pocket. I am just giving them out. I, again, like Struds gives out chicken wings yeah. to old people in old <laughs> bars in Grand Prairie. Yeah, great. Can I just give out one? I'm going to give out uh, 34 points for the uh, – I just got the note. I saw it on Twitter. Whoa, uh, when whoa, pick, what are we doing here? What are you doing here? What, well, no, I'm just, I'm just jumping just, on the back. Just yeah, but give why, whoa, points. why do you think that you – do can, I get – because it's appropriate. It's appropriate. I just, no, but, once you see, you'll know, see the tweet. You guys didn't see the tweet. What's Winnipeg he doing Jets here, Brownie? This are is your segment. I don't know. Do, do, sitting, I get, do, I get to be, do I get to walk on Strutty's world sometimes? I, don't, I guess from do now get, like, on, you can just jump in there? right in the middle of Strutty's world and start doing opinions of yours, I guess, if you... Winnipeg I'm, I'm going to talk about shoveling my driveway one day. Here, this is how you shovel your driveway. Pierre Lebrun just tweeted <laughs> out that apparently... <laughs> 
Winnipeg Jets are sitting Hellebuck for the first three games, so he's rested for the second round against uh, <laughs> against Dallas. <laughs> Did he really? Was he being yeah. a smart ass? <laughs> Pierre LeBron said that, or maybe it was it was the other guy, uh, Gordy Dwyer, whatever. Oh. Someone, someone, I forget who it was. Thirty-four. Kevin Curious. Oh, Gordy, do you accept those? You get the final say. Oh that. my goodness, that is I I I am giving an extra one hundred and twenty-three <laughs> brownie points to Strud for his really good brownie point give out to Winnipeg. Uh, yeah. See, I thought flyers. you might have had yeah. some. Now, I won't be so bold as to just try and hand some out because it's clearly it's not my place, and I know <laughs> my place. I would have thought maybe there might have been eighty-nine brownie points tonight, bud, for a little little special uh, little Oiler forward that got in the lineup maybe for the last well, time. Yeah, I've said I, 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 we talked about it on our show before the game. Whether Adam Ernie and, and obviously Sam Gunny, if it's their last ever NHL game, I didn't want to say that. Because I, I I didn't want to put that yeah. out there because I haven't heard if Sam Gagne is coming back. If he wants to keep playing. So I don't want to be the one that says, hey, for Sam Gagne's last ever NHL game. So uh, I You could have given him to the to coach myself. for getting Gagne in. 89 to Chris Knobloch for having Gagne in the lineup for the last yeah. game of the year. Could've well, that. actually, you know what would have been nice? Would have been nice 24 brownie points if they would have called up Brad Malone his last oh, ever game yeah. before he retired. That would have been kind of cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, that is good for nice, nice kid. Played, uh, he got played some playoff games for the Oilers. Had a nice career. Good for him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mike Smith there chimed in. Eighty nine points to Sam Gagne. Um, definitely wanting that. By the way, uh, Steve, are your feelings hurt at all? Because Mike Smith is really <laughs> concerned about you. He literally said, "Ryan, quit being so hard on Steve." And then there was talk of me being taken to HR. Yeah. So I mean, so. this is constructive feedback I'm giving you on your timing. Yeah. This is about your fast twitch. This is no, work in general. You just you're a little slow. No, it's just it's just I, I did text HR by the way. That's that is your wife. Yeah. Oh my wife. <laughs> text for Steve. <laughs> no, I was I actually I actually just typed something in the comments and I hadn't even sent it yet. And I said, We're all great buddies, folks. Chirping is half the fun. If oh, we yeah. if we weren't chirping, then uh then there's something to be concerned about. <laughs> all right. Uh, Steve, that's enough talking till the end of the podcast, bud, but thanks. Sorry, boss. <laughs> Love you, buddy. Uh, Brownie, great job tonight on Brownie Points, brought to you by Hamel's Premium Jerky that we all uh, are loving these days. Uh, Brownie, I think we're going to do a setup pod on Sunday night to dig into all the latest. By then, we'll know line combinations. We'll know more. There'll be other series underway. So we'll talk to you on Sunday night, pal. Sounds good. Good night, guys. All right, the great See, Rob Brown. When we come back, uh, tons more to get through. We got Take a Lap, we got Struddy's World, and we got Ask Us Anything. Stay with us. For over 60 years, Belvedere Golf and Country Club has been delivering a high-quality golf experience to Edmonton and area. This beautiful private club located on Highway 21 just south of Sherwood Park occupies 160 acres and presents a challenging yet adventurous 18-hole design. A beautiful clubhouse, fully stocked pro shop, and warm, friendly staff truly make it feel like you belong to something unique and special. Visit www.belvedergcc.com. Long Shots Golf is the destination for both golf enthusiasts and sports fans. Top of the line TrackMan simulators provide a highly entertaining and accurate golf experience, while a full service sports bar loaded with big screens and scratch kitchen make it a truly unique destination. They have locations in Sherwood Park and Edmonton. Experience the best indoor golf and sports bar in town. Visit longshots.ca. That's longshots with a Z.ca. Spring is here, and if you're thinking of buying a new home during the housing market hot period, contacting a mortgage broker should be your first step. Maria Gallus with Maxwell Mortgages can guide you with a stress-free experience. With access to dozens of different lenders, Maria's simplistic approach and expert advice will have you ready to put an offer in on your dream home. Take the stress out of your mortgage journey. Contact Maria Gallus at mortgagesbymaria.ca. That's mortgagesbymaria.ca. When you make a mistake, heads should roll. It's not right. And I'm here, someone has to put their foot down. Now that I say it out loud, it does sound a little crazy. Guy look good. (laughs) 
<laughs> Love the jingle. <laughs> Love the shipwreck jingle. Time out for Strutty's World brought to you by Shipwreck Rum. If you haven't yet had the experience of this amazing flavored rum, blend it on the Caribbean island of St. Kitts. Do yourself a favor and grab a bottle today. The Brindley family has been at this for decades. Their spiced rum is aged four years in bourbon barrels infused with natural vanilla. Get Shipwreck fans available at your local liquor retailer. And as always, <clears throat> excuse me, please enjoy responsibly. Freddie. Today, the uh, New Jersey Devils, while well, like many teams kind of had their their clean up and got things uh, over with and Ryan Rashog sent in the uh the whole situation with Tom Fitzgerald the GM and then president his thoughts on their team and it was it was about 40 minutes and it was it's always insightful to hear what the GM thinks at the end of the year especially when they don't win the Stanley Cup so he kind of goes on and on or not on but he talks a little bit about <clears throat> I got the sense he was talking about the team maybe uh not always being professional not being in shape and then he was kind of ask a question about you know just small little details so let's hear about this is the gm tom fitzgerald talking about kind of details within a group to be honest i probably have let my guard down on a, a lot of areas that may not matter up front but the looser you get it may be just dress code with people you loosen it up a little bit you know the old saying, right? You give an inch, they take a yard. You give a yard, you know. It's be a little tighter, you know. Um, the that's good, Steve, of, right there. That, that's really good. So, so this this is my take. So, you know, when he hears when you hear the word dress code, you're like, oh god, this guy worries if Jack Hughes is wearing a, a button up or a, a tie down. Like it, it, it does it matter? Maybe, maybe not. And I, I think that the dress code is maybe a bad example in this situation. But I believe what he's talking about, he's talking about the details of preparation. So when in the summer are the players doing their full workouts? Are they doing more than, than asked? Are they coming ready to prepare? When they come to training camp, are they there on time? You know, as far as, I'm not talking about coming on September 1st, but are you, like when, when, when the session starts at 9, are you there at 9 or are you there at 9.01? Or are you late for meetings? Or is a bus, when it says the bus leaving at 10, do you get on the bus at 10.05? Um, all these little details, if, if, there's no, if there's no phone rule within the dress room during a game, are you still looking at your phone? Like, so just little things. And everyone, ha we all have our own quirks. I can tell you as a player, there are things I probably did that probably annoyed my, my, my coach or whatever, just as far as not the game, just preparation for game. I believe in details. I think it does make a difference. So I don't think that the dress code is really the biggest one on the paper, but it just feels like and sounds like Shoggers. You listen to his whole press conference. He's talking about it being pretty casual there in New Jersey, and maybe the guys aren't quite up to being his standard or what he thinks required to be a professional hockey player that lives, breathes, and just dreams it. And I think the guy we could point to is here in Edmonton. I don't think there's anything Conor McDavid does that doesn't have a purpose towards being the best player he can be for his team. Yeah, great points there, Struds. And I mean, the backdrop to this is a Jersey team that had much greater hopes than where their season ended up taking them, right? This is not the place that they want to be in at all. Mm. And so it's going to be reflection across the board for management and, and staff and all of those things. Now, I agree with you. It's like, Small little details do add up, and it presents part of the big picture. I'm actually more, and I'm maybe a little bit more old school in my thinking about this. I have no issue whatsoever with a team wanting its players to dress professionally and to dress a certain way um, mm -hmm. to come to their job. I, I don't have any issue with that at all. If a team were to say, look, guys, be as creative and fun as you want, but wear a suit and a tie. Like wear mm -hmm. a suit and a tie. That's our standard. When we show up for work, we're ready to be professional. We expect you all to conduct yourselves professionally, and this is our standard. Now, I don't have an issue with that. Some people do, and some people think it's too stuffy and too old school and all that. But as long as you're reasonable and you treat people well, I think it's okay to, to decide it for an organization. This is one of the details, the way we present ourselves. Um, that's important to us. So I, I really didn't have that much of an issue with it. Now, is that going to equal the difference between winning and losing, whether you wear a suit and a tie to a game or not? I don't think so, Struds. But I think 
managers should have some ability to control some of that stuff and to set certain standards in place. And if it works, great. And if it doesn't, the next guy will do his thing. I feel at times when you're focusing on a tiny little detail like that, maybe you're not sure about the other answers. And let me give them two that might, might be able to help them. Goaltending and bigger players. Those are two issues they have. I mean, you yeah, look at that team. Sons, it can't be. It's not like he never mentioned goaltenders or I know, other I issues know. with the team all day long. I mean, that's I what know, we but, picked out. We're cherry picking this one thing. Well, I know, but but what I'm saying is that that it, like I just I, I I agree with the details. But so today we as I don't know if you know this during the game, Connor did not have a tie on watching the game upstairs. Sure. Or so or or Hyman had a, a, a they're going back and forth. Was it a turtleneck or not? And, and that's a whole nother conversation whether that's right or wrong about a turtleneck, but like the whole thing, like, so it's, it's to me, there are certain details that really matter. And I, like, I think if, as you, if, as a player, you show up and you look presentably look nice, that's good enough. I, I can live with that. If you show up late and you weren't a suit, I'm not going to be happy. I, I just, I have a pro, I have a real problem with tardiness because that tells me you're not ready to go. If you show up and you're, you're, you look kind of half asleep still, your hair is on sideways. I don't like that look either. Like that, that to me is more damning than a guy coming with a, a whatever, a Duran Duran t shirt and a pair of jeans. Like those details matter um, to me more than perhaps what they're wearing. I think it's about reading your group. I think it's about working with leadership and reading your group. If your analysis of your group is we got a lot of young guys mm -hmm. and they're all. You know, um, we don't have a lot of maybe structure in our veteran group and structure in our leadership core. And we, we're relying on a lot of young guys. We feel as an organization, we need to implement a little bit more structure in a few areas to compensate for the fact that a lot of our core people haven't been around long enough to just make be making sure on some of these. Like, I'm, I'm OK with it, man. Like, as long as you. As, as long as you're not, um, as long as you're allowing people to be themselves and you're allowing people to express themselves and not being stuffy and ridiculous, like the Lou Lamorello shavings, I mean, it's ridiculous. That, that's the kind of stuff that's just goofy. But to but say, won. listen, when you're coming to the Stanley Cups, well, right. So by, by, by what you're saying, that should be allowed. That, sh that should be good. But that's, and that's what I just agree with that. See, no, but to me, that's different. That's telling somebody that would be like saying you have to, you know, you have to have your hair a certain length. You have to have your facial hair a certain the Yankees length. Did that. We only want, they I know, won. but that's, that's the stuff that we're past. I think we're, st we're past that stuff struds, but I think if as a group, you get together and say, okay, what are we doing for a dress code for uh morning skates? And the group is like, well, why don't we get matching track suits and, for our group, some structure and some, you know, some of that would be good. Let's do that. So then, okay, whatever the whatever the group decides, you know, everybody stick to it. And it allows you to have little points of structure. And you're all part of that. As long as your players are on board and agree to it and it's not draconian, I think it's fine. Hmm. Yeah, no, I, I I hear what you're saying. I, I would, I would, that'd be way at the end of my list. For sure. Me and, too. I, and again, I, I, on, I don't care how good the GM looks. If they don't find a goalie or bigger players, they're going to be talking about the same thing the whole all the time. I agree. And, and it's I, not and at the top of my priority list either. And I and I can't I can't I just can't get past that. So I think yeah, it's it's at, at times these little details can become a distraction for the group because they can't deal with the heart of the issue. And to me, with the Devils, that's the heart of the issue. Right on, Struddy's World, brought to you by Shipwreck Rum. Okay, playoff matchups are set. So as we get into our take a lap segment, I think we're going to take a quick lap around the league, Struddy. You and I will couple of, make a couple of uh, predictions. We'll figure out what this first round is going to look like. Uh, so let's get to that. It'll be brought to you by Backscape, the fastest growing male grooming company on the planet. And it is now even better. Backscape 2.0. Uh, the friction fit handle allows you to effortlessly snap the shaver in and out to touch up the rest of your body. And the shave head gives a smoother, more comfortable shave that respects your skin. We've got a promo code for you. GYB10 for 10% off advanced deluxe kits, the 2.0 kits. So use that at uh, backscape.com. That's B-A-K-scape.com. And use the promo code GYB10 for 10% off. Yes, stay smooth, gentlemen. And Struddy, this 2.0 is legit. I actually just got sent this. And the difference <laughs> of this thing, bud? 
Look yes. at that thing. Just slips right oh. in and out of there. So the first iteration wasn't like this. It was a little yeah. bit more difficult to get this thing in and out. But now, thing just like pops it. in and out. You can use it wherever you want to use it. So Are we cool going to get a right live demo right now or what? Uh, <laughs> sure. You know what? While we're taking a lap, I'm going to shave my chest. I kid. Uh, Strudge, we are, after, we are after midnight, so you know. Yeah, yeah, let, yeah. Let's get through this, Strudge. You want to start out out uh, east? We'll run through the, oh, the series there. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, uh, so Canes and Islanders. Uh, I've got the Canes in five games. I think they're too strong. I think they got better, and uh, I think the Isles are happy to be there and good on them. But I got the Canes in five. Yeah, and so before I get into my th predictions, I have the right to change these before Sunday night. Let's just say that because we're going to get together again and chat. Okay. Because uh, there are some that That's are weird sandbagging. Well, no, because some of these out west are relatively new, and I want to make sure I kind of look at a little bit more at it. I don't want to just be shooting uh, out of nowhere. So I got to give a little bit of time. So I agree. Actually, I'm I, as much as the Islanders have played well recently, I also like the Canes. But I'm because of the way the Islanders have played recently, I'm going with the Canes in six in this, Ooh, in this match. Interesting. By the way, for our Ask Us Anything segment, if you want to fire in some predictions, uh, go ahead. Steve's monitoring the feed, and you can give us your playoff predictions. By the way, somebody named Boob in the chat already threw in a Kings in six, and that has ignited the chat something fierce. Wow. A call for the Kings okay. has been made in the Weiss Johnson YouTube chat. Leafs and Bruins. You go ahead on Ooh. that one, Struds. I hear everyone calling this a coin toss. What coin toss are we talking about here? Have you looked at the goalie situation? I just, this, that, and then the D. The goalies and the D, I believe, make a big difference. There's a lot of firepower up front for the Leafs, no doubt about it. But I just don't see it. I cannot see it happening. So I'm going to go again. I'll go a Bruins in five. I got the Bruins in six games. I think that the Leafs stars are going to put up a real good uh, fight. Uh, I don't think they're going to want to go quietly. But weird stuff from Sheldon Keefe the last couple of days. Hey, like talking about <laughs> he was talking about how Nylander sick of regular season hockey. Talking about how if he was concerned about their recent results, he's like, I couldn't even tell you the score of tonight's game, let alone any. Basically saying we yeah. don't give a crap and haven't for a few games. The the important stuff is about to start. Well, you better start on time because you got the Boston Bruins. I got the Bruins in six. Panthers in seven over the Tampa Bay Lightning in what I think will be one of the, if not the best series of the first round struts. Oh, it's going to be great. I, I actually, I'm really happy the way these Eastern ones went down. I've had some time to think about this. I'm going bolts. I'm going to go bolts in seven. And, and um, I think it's going to be Vasilevsky. that makes a big difference. So bolts in seven. Yeah, that's a fair call. Like the say what you want, man, the Tampa Bay Lightning, you talk about the spine of a team. You know, you got to have the high-end forward, the high-end defenseman, the high-end goaltender. Like, they are just so, they're so, so good. By the yeah. way, Steve's got a poll going uh, as well in the chat here, asking for your prediction in the Oilers series as well. Rangers and Capitals. Go, Streds. Mm. Can I do it in three? <laughs> <laughs> Rangers in four. I think the Caps, it's a nice story that got in, but I, I got Rangers in four. Yeah, I can't imagine when the Rangers really apply themselves to this thing. I'm not sure how much pushback Washington is going to be able to muster. I agree with you. It's been a good story. Wing and a prayer. Weird circumstance that they get in under. Um, I think they've had their big party already. Jets and the Avalanche. I know you said you feel like maybe Winnipeg can get past them. I think Colorado is going to win this in seven games. I'm going the Avalanche in what? seven games. Yeah. Okay, just based on what? Based, so just give me the the basing, the basis of this I whole think discussion. that much in the way that Connor McDavid can carry a team through a series if he has to, I think Nate McKinnon has that ability this year. I think Nate McKinnon's going to do some unreal stuff, and I think he's going to be able to propel them at least through this series. So right sheerly on the strength of arguably the best player in the world this year right now. Okay. Did, did Nate McKinnon, did they trade for a guy named Nate McKinnon as a goaltender? <laughs> I know. I know what I, you're I, saying. I, know I, what you're I can't. Saying. I, I can't. Out of respect for your one, I'll go Jets in six. I had okay. it down to five, but I'll go in six. I, I think the goaltending is going to be a major issue for that group. And the Jets are so deep. They're really deep. They're defense. They have guys sitting out uh, that are good defensemen. Like, I, I think they're going to do, they're not going to blow them away, but they're going to grind them down like erosion. Yep. 
I'm interested in your next prediction. The Vancouver Canucks and the Nashville oh, Predators. God. I have never seen a team finish where the Vancouver Canucks have finished and have so few people believing in them in any way, shape, or form. And quite frankly, that includes their fan base when you look <laughs> online at the way they're talking about their team. What are you doing with the Canucks and the Predators? So this is the one I want more time to look at. I will give a prediction tonight, but I, I got to just look at it a little bit more than I have so far. I... This it's one is a gut says this, this, yeah, this is, this one's a, a, just, yeah, it is a gut. It's this one I think is, could be, could go any which way, but I will go Canucks in six. I think that uh, Demko Soros probably saw each other off and I like a little bit more offensive ice uh, firepower for Vancouver. Uh, than then we see with, um, with Nashville, although like guys like, like uh, we know Forsberg, those guys are, and I think Riley had 25 or 30 goals. this year. like, they've got some, I don't know there's something I like about Van. So I'm gonna go Van and six, but again, I reserve the right to change this on Sunday. Who do you think plays better in the series? Hughes or Yossi? Which D man do you think will impact that series more meaningfully? That's a good one. I hey, man, I think Roman Yossi's been through it before. That's what I, I think mean. He'll, he'll probably be the guy that plays better. Um, and I worry about the size of Quinn Hughes. I, I I'm guessing that Nashville's is gonna try to lay the body on that guy every which way they can. Uh, I've got the, the Vancouver Canucks in six games as well. I have the Dallas Stars beating Vegas. I'm going to give it six games because I think Vegas is going to get some bodies back, and I think they'll put up a good fight. I might be giving it one too many games, but I'm going to say six games between Dallas and Vegas. Who's the starting goalie for Vegas? Yeah, well. Aiden no. Hill looks like he's playing on roller skates right no. now. I know it wasn't good, man. It wasn't and and that's not it. I'm not being disrespectful, but from what yeah. we saw last year to what we saw now, even you go back to when they played the Oilers, like he he does not he's not comfortable in the in 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 the pipes, and I get it. He hasn't played a ton, so I've got Dallas in five. I, I really think that they're yep. a very deep team, deeper than Winnipeg, and I think Winnipeg is like is deep, well deep. I think the Oilers are going to come out like house on fire. I think they're going to be rocking and rolling, and I think they're going to start better this year than they have in previous years, and they get an early lead here, and I think they're going to – I'm going to give them five games. That's probably yeah. not respecting the Kings enough. I think I did the same thing last year. I'm yeah. going to go the Oilers in five. Yeah, this is a tough one. I'm probably not going to go Kings in six. <laughs> But <laughs> and so I, th I think that time's going someone in six is kind of gutless. So I'll, I'll go with you. I got orders in five as well. I'm going to go orders in five. Interesting. Um, I think the goaltending is a pretty big difference. I don't see a huge difference in the D. I think that the orders are, you know, they, they, they've got some good D there. Um, you know, you, you look at some of the, the scores for uh, LA have struggled, Notab noticeably Byfield has scored a lot. So lately, so I got orders in five. All right. That's your quick roundup. Lots of great uh, contributions coming in on the stream as well. Oilers in six, I see. Nick Mellon calling the Oilers in five. Uh, Nishan Carell just flat out asking, is LA better or worse than last year? Uh, probably a fair question given the Dubois trade and how it watered down their lineup and affected them struds. Hey, like that, you look at their lineup, man, and I was looking at their lineup from last year. Boy, they're missing those guys. I have Fallow and company. Whew. Yeah, it's tough. Although I think Quinn Byfield's been playing a bit with uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois, and they've been doing better. Or it seems like that, that's that been a pretty decent line for them. Yeah. Um, pretty big, heavy line. So something to watch for, like, who's matched up against that for the oil. Yeah. Uh, that was Taking a Lap, brought to you by Backscape. All right, Steve, hop on in here, my friend. Time for Ask Us Anything. We get everybody on the stream involved. By the way, really... Healthy audience on the live show tonight. We really appreciate your contributions. We yeah, will awesome. lovingly ask that you pound that love button. If you get an opportunity, hit that like button for us. Um, apparently that helps us. That's what the kids tell me. So if you don't mind, <clears throat> go ahead and do that for us. Time for Ask Us Anything. And it'll be brought to you by Match Eatery and Public House, your destination for all the sports action, big screens, ice cold beer, and all your pub favorites perfected. Match Eatery and Public House adjacent to Rogers Place in the Grand Villa Casino. For more information, check out matchpub.com. Steve, we will do the poll last All to right. wrap up uh, Ask Us Anything. Uh, how would you characterize our 
our live stream tonight, my friend. Everyone's cautiously optimistic. <laughs> That's yeah. how I'd characterize it. Everyone's excited. I think people are excited that we're facing LA. Um, and uh, yeah, they're just not being too boastful about it. Um, so yeah, it sounds like most people, I would say, um, have a good feeling about this about this uh, first round. So, and sure. we should clarify too, Steve, you're a Monstro Oiler fan too. Like Monstro Oiler fan, I am. Uh, Steve. So he's right there with you. Yeah. Um, go ahead, buddy. What do we got? Okay, so uh, one prediction. Nathan Jameson says Canes in six, Rangers in five, Bolts in six, Bruins in seven, Stars in six, Jets in seven, Oilers in five, Canucks in seven. I thought that was all pretty, pretty good. Yeah, pretty mainstream. Pretty yeah. mainstream. Didn't go for a lot of, yeah, for sure. The killed zombie very, uh, very early in the stream, as soon as we opened it up, said LA versus Edmonton, battle of suspect goaltending. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Made me laugh. Struds, how much, like, like Skinner... Skinner last year wasn't at the level that he would have wanted to be at Struds. You've talked a lot about Skinner all year long. What's your sense on what Stu Skinner is ready to throw out here? I think the fact that he went through it last year is huge. Until you're in the playoffs, until you felt it, the pressure, the intensity, the even the scheduling, all that stuff, you, you have no idea what you're getting into. He now knows. Um, Stu is a very relaxed guy, very calm guy. I think that he is mentally and physically ready for this whereas last year he didn't know what to go into so i'm i'm way more comfortable with him in there and i to suggest that both teams the Oilers and the kings both have bad goaltending i think would be i think that's you're mischaracterizing what we've seen all year from Stu skinner steve i'm going to take one more here from jl uh says has ryan heard anything regarding who the new general manager will be that's going to be a pretty significant talking point when the season is over Struds, my guess is, is there are probably some clandestine conversations happening in the moment and a list of names somewhere and maybe even some conversations happening. This is an important position, and I know we're very focused on the playoffs and such right now, but this is something that has to be pretty high on Jeff Jackson's to-do list. I just don't think we're going to hear much about it at all during the playoffs. I would say it's like the duck. Calm on top, feet are going hard underneath. <laughs> yeah, there's no reason to to bring this up now. It has nothing to do like for for the players to hear this and to think about who who's going to be dealing with me on my next contract like that. This is not the time. You want the the noise around the team as quiet as possible. Um, so you're right. I'm sure they are figuring it out and looking at what they who who they want to talk to. But I I'd be blown away if that was even mentioned at all. And what we hope to be the next weeks. Okay, Nick Mellon uh, coming in with the X Factor here. He says, teams like Winnipeg and Dallas, I don't trust they have um, the factor they need. Colorado and Vegas have won and they know what it takes. So that that factor of, you know, teams that have won in the past versus ones that haven't, how significant is that, Struds? Well, every team that, until they win, they haven't won, you know? So I think that that's kind of how, how it works. You look at some of those guys from Dallas, they've been to the final. Uh, before I know there's not many of them left there. Um, but I would rather have a lot of good players. Like I think Dallas has more good players than uh, than Avs do, although the Avs have some probably higher end ones. But yeah. the, the Dallas has some more depth through their lineup. And I think that shows in what they got, how many 20 goal scores they got. So I, I think that I I believe it's it's going to be Dallas Winnipeg over there and then I think obviously Vancouver Edmonton over here but it's going to be tough and then getting out of that like think these teams are big and physical it's going to be tough tough I tough. can't get I can't get Ottinger's performance against the Calgary Flames a couple of years ago out of my I know. head he was but he hasn't been out of this yeah, world like he, he was and he won them so he beef jerky out of this world but he hasn't been he <laughs> He hasn't been that guy all year this year, right? He's had sure. he's shown signs of it. Yeah. Um, so, but I do believe that again, if once he gets locked on, like the, assuming they continue to win, the the better, the further he goes, the better he's going to get. And I think that's that's kind of scary if you're in that division or in the Western Conference. Actually, you concerned at all that Kane hasn't played at all here lately, Struggs? I don't know. I you know what? I need to know what the injury is. I yeah. I got to. He's playing before, like he played, and uh, maybe they said, "Screw it, just sit this guy and let's just make him healthy and you know, fresh legs." Um, I do you, like. Do you think there's a chance he doesn't start game one? I don't think so. I don't think it's been serious yeah. enough that my guess is he probably yeah. could have been playing, but they're just making sure. Yeah. 
My concern with Kane is like you don't want him missing too much time. You know, you want him if you if he's going to push for more minutes, he needs to be able to handle those minutes, right? So whatever the injury is, hopefully it allows him to work cardio and stay in shape. And uh, you know, I'm not sure if he's been skating on the road or not, but like you want him in tip top shape come playoff time to handle 18, 19 minutes. If that's right. what his play dictates, you don't want to have this guy that you would want to get out on the ice more, but he hasn't been playing enough and, and he's not able to handle it. I think that's critical. I don't think he dropped how, how many, what has he been out for about a week? Yeah. Give or take. You're, you're not dropping off that quick. Like if it's a month, but a week, mm-hmm. you know, like I'll be interested to see, cause when the I'm guessing tomorrow, Friday's a day off and probably practice Saturday, Sunday. Um, I would expect to see him back on the ice Saturday if he's playing in game one. Now, if he's not practicing Saturday and they and the whole team practices, then probably a little now different conversation. Yep. Steve-o, yeah. Steve, a couple more, bud. Okay, we got a Yanmark one and a Fogel one. So um uh Riapol was uh saying if you're playing Yanmark over Holloway, you're lost. And Shane Matheson replied with uh Yanmark just went three games where the line against him didn't even get a shot on net. Yanmark is the definition of playoff hockey. Thoughts on what Yanmark's going to bring in these playoffs? Shogger. Yeah, and I think the head coach is going to gravitate towards putting him in. I'm not sure if he would need to be the answer for Holloway to come out. I guess I wonder if Sam Carrick needs to be in. Can Yanmark be as effective as a center? He's played there before. Um, if Holloway Has Holloway been good enough that you're willing to put Yanmark in the middle and pull Carrick? I think that's an interesting question. I think Holloway will throw as many body checks through the course of a night and he'll push pace, whereas Carrick will take it the other way. I think Janmark has a chance to be decent for them. He'll kill penalties. And the thing about Janmark, and and you can't deny it, is he his lines don't give up a lot against. And he's real good. His, his analytics are real good on that front. So I get it. I totally get it. I think he's going to be good. And I can see why a coach would lean that way, Strads. Veterans are predictable. And people don't want to hear that, but they are predictable. Yanmark, you know what you're getting night in, night out. And that's valued in the playoffs. Okay, Ro Nelson, sorry, on uh, on Fogel. It says, Fogel's too soft for the playoffs. He has two goals, two assists in 25 playoff games with the Oilers and minus seven with 16 penalty minutes in 12 games last playoffs. <laughs> Let's not pin our hopes on 37. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, obviously, Fogel has matured quite a bit um, since last year. Thoughts he needs on the uh, regular season bounce, hey, Steve? Like, he was so good during the yeah. regular season. Like, guys, he just needs to take that confidence and rock and roll right into the playoffs. Yeah. Like, just think don't he, even think yeah. about the past. I don't think he's ever played better hockey. Honestly, the way he's yeah. driving, attacking the net, and, and maybe there's some recency bias there. But honestly, I think he's playing really well. Um, so I, I have, I, I don't have, you know, exceedingly high hopes that he's going to go Pisani here on this, but I think that I want him driving the net, attacking the puck, um, driving that puck to the net, hitting bodies. Like that's what I want to see from him. If he scores great, but if he plays the way I just outlined, he will score some goals. All right, Steve, let's, you got uh, any more? Are we going to wrap it? Let's just end it with the poll results. Yeah. yeah so, um, yeah, I could only fit four options uh, for the poll. So I said, place your bets. Um, yeah, Oilers in four, only 5% agreed with that. Uh, Oilers in five or six and a whopping 81% of uh, respondents said eight, right. said yeah. Oilers in five or six. Uh, Oilers in seven was 7% and uh, Kings win the series was only 5%. So the vast majority... Everybody Pinning likes hopes. that safe, yeah, that yeah, safe five little five to six right range. Yeah, that's a that's a safe bet. All right, that was Ask Us Anything, brought to you by Match Eatery and Public House. Time now for our play of the day, brought to you by Play Alberta. When the puck drops, the bets don't stop. Right now, with the odds boosts on games that you care about the most, Scott, your back has an exclusive offer that'll score you a fifty dollar free bet. Just deposit today at playalberta.ca with the promo code GYB50. So once again, that's playalberta.ca, promo code GYB50, and that'll score you a $50 free bet. Struddy, what was the play of the day today? This this could be like a butterfly's wings hitting a pond or whatever that, that saying is. Victor Arvidsson scoring... What the, in the dying seconds of the game, so the Oilers play the Kings. So what? In some alternate universe, he doesn't score. The Oilers are playing the the, the, the Vegas. I have no idea this is going to affect, but I'm sure we'll break it down 
If it goes really well for the Oilers or really badly, we'll talk about Victor Arvidsson and what he did to make this happen. So that's, that's to me, it affects everything, the Western Conference. That was clutch, man. That, that was clutch. Came through. And uh, yeah, it's been a crazy couple of nights just in terms of the standings crazy. finalizing themselves. Hey, we didn't get crazy. to talk the other night with all that mayhem, but how about Torts pulling the goalie? Didn't know how many yeah. teams that affected. Like that was bizarro world. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, you know what? I think the team that probably deserved got in, got in, in the out east. Yeah. I mean, you could argue Detroit, but they had some pretty tough losing streaks. So, but honestly, whoever's getting in there wasn't winning. So it doesn't matter. It's, it's a great, great vacation for seven days. The play of the day brought to you by Play Alberta. Boys, the regular season is over. How the freaking Lulia. Time to talk some playoff hockey. I'm fired up. I'm really excited, man. Like, this is going to be really good. And there's a lot riding on this. This Oiler team has lots of pressure, but Oiler fans have lots to be hopeful about. It's going to be fun, Struds. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to watching the Oilers, but then on non-Oiler nights. Well, oh, just watching it long. Good games. This could be a crazy playoffs. I really think this will be a great two months. We're going to be doing some late ass podcasts though, Steve. Oh, I don't God, know if you and know. Zuby are ready, Ooh. man, because the work just starts for you when the show ends. How are you feeling <laughs> yeah. about these 830 starts, bud? Well, at least we're Pacific time, so we get one extra hour. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, fair enough. Steve, sending lots of love your way, buddy. You know we love you. <laughs> right back at you guys. All right. Take care, man. We'll talk again real soon. Struts, good job today, friend. Likewise, talk to you guys uh, Sunday. Yeah, Sunday night. Thanks to everybody that hopped in on the live stream. And if you're consuming us in podcast form, hey. Hope you're having a safe drive. Thanks for downloads and thanks for your subscriptions as well. Uh, we'll talk Sunday night. We'll have more information. We'll know what the lines look like potentially. Lots of great talking points. We'll hear what the players are saying. We'll set it all up for you on Sunday night. We'll see you then. Cheers, everyone.